Hello and welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about the function of the Vespa PX CDI electronical unit, as well called as the capacitor discharge ignition. What a song breaker, anyway. So in theory, this is a crucial component of the ignition system of, for, for the Vespa and, and I saw it meanwhile that small frames or early small frames, large frames, wide frames are using this wonderful 12 volt ignition system and it's meanwhile a standard. Yeah? So, and we're going to talk about in this video how it works, how we're going to do a couple of checks, multimeter checks with ohms, what is needed. Let's go. How it works a bit theory um, so energy generation when the engine turns the stator generates alternated current AC which is stored in the CDI unit charging the capacitor the generated AC power charges an internal capacitor over here inside the CDI for sure so this one here again um, ignition pulse, a signal from the pickup sensor determines the exact moment when the capacitor releases its stored energy to the ignition coil over here. Yeah. This sudden discharge creates a high voltage, around 400 yeah, pulse, uh, which is sent to the spark plug. Ignition the full air mixture. That's the easy yeah, working of the CDI. Um, hope this this nice Leonardo da Vinci art will help you a bit to understand what's going on. Um, as you can see, we have a couple of resistance here. So 56, 10, 470, 33. Um, and that's, that's a nice yeah, feature, gimmick. I don't know how to call it, but in theory, you need um, a couple of turnarounds to charge the the ignition uh, or the capacitor sorry um, and um, as you can see we have here low amount of, of resistance therefore you need just a few kicks to charge the capacitor which is quite clever to be honest I was never uh, I never saw this before that that it's quite interesting how they change the full ignition to the 12 volt and adjust the methodology that you need less kicks to charge the capacitor which is very good it's very very clever to be honest really nice testing with a multimeter so we set this on ohm 2000 that's okay that's enough so we are picking the white white and red rosso and we should have around 500 ohm that's okay very good so now we're gonna take white and verde so green and there should be oh sorry i have to set to 200,000 kilo ohm should be around 88 ah 88.8 .8. very good um can be then, oh it happened, I saw it multiple times that old CDIs had amount over 100,000. Um, I don't know what happened, uh, it's, 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 I saw it quite a few times that this, and the engine is still working fine. Yeah? Maybe it's related to the point that less resistance means better ignition sparks, I don't know. Um, maybe you have an idea, leave a comment if you know, would be nice. The, the another nice story is that this cable is for the ground, yeah? And there is the assumption that if it's broken, gone, the engine will not start. Based on the wonderful Leonardo da Vinci chart I did is, as you can see, this ground cable here, so white, is directly connected with these cables. So it's a just, and if I change it to connection, just testing, yeah, so let's see, it's connected. It's just a, a backup yeah, of the ground connection. Still, if it's gone, doesn't matter. So you can also take another cable from here to the frame. That's double connected. But in theory, it doesn't impact the ignition. 
Another tip for my end is when you don't have a spark is I disconnect first of all the kill cable. The kill cable is normally at the outside, the green one, yeah, coming from the uh, wiring harness. Um, if it's inside then disconnect the inside one, yeah, just to be clear. Um, and then I'm gonna disconnect the four cables coming from the stator plates, the yellow, black, red and blue. Just to check that I don't have any short circuit in the wiring harness resulted into no ignition spark. Yeah. I saw multiple times that some specialists are not using this grommet here, which is really, really important. It's connected because it will prevent that water is coming inside here. And uh, you know, water and ignition is not a good partner. So therefore always use it, that's the first one. Second one is, I don't know if you can see it, so um, cutting the ignition cable or the spark cable should be done with a really sharp tool, not with a toothbrush, it looks like. So cut it really nice and smooth. Next one is the spark plug. Um, I, in the previous time I used always Bosch, but the quality of Bosch is meanwhile very, very bad. That's why I'm using NGK, which is honestly one of the best. Really one of the best, I really like it. Um, they're coming with a couple of grommets for water protection. Yeah, very good. And I don't know if you know, there's as well a resistance in it. Let's set it to 20. Yeah, five. 5 kilo ohm. As you can see. <laughs> right, that's it. Hope it helps. Um, if you like the video, thumbs up, follow me for more. If you have any questions, thanks for joining. Bye bye.